Hi guys, this is Preston with Cutting Edge Automotive Solutions. Today we're going to go through a software walkthrough of the Texa Off-Highway software. Now the Off-Highway software uh, offered by Texa is more than just construction. This is agriculture, construction, forklifts and telehandlers, and industrial. So the agriculture, we're going to go through there first, then we'll move on to construction and so on down the list. So agriculture, this is going to be everything, um, John Deere 5E, uh, sprayers, combines, threshers, harvesters, everything uh, in between. Your construction vehicles, skid steers, uh, excavators, dumpers, dozers, and then uh, your forklifts and telehandlers are forklifts and telehandlers as well as some thrown in cranes, um, so both superstructure and engine side. And then industrial engine, is going to be standalone engines. So pumps, um, big air compressors, generators, genset machines, that kind of thing. So this is what the software looks like. First we make our category selection. So I'm gonna go construction vehicles. It's the one I normally use. We'll go here. And then you pick your make. So this is where you're gonna pick Atlas Cobco, Caterpillar, um, Bell, whatever you're working on. So for ours, we're going to use Bobcat, it's easy, and there's a lot of them out there. So we'll do Bobcat, and then you're going to pick your model. So I'm going to use Skid Steer, and then you're picking an engine selection. This one came with either engine, so we'll go Kubota. Now we're back on this page, this is self-diagnosis, so you have a couple different options on how you can scan the vehicle. You can do system scan, this is going to scan every single module on the vehicle and give you a full report top to bottom between you know engine brakes transmission hydraulics everything if you want to go to a specific system you can do that you can just go down to diagnose by system and you can pick diesel injection after treatment auxiliary control unit or gateway traction control whatever you're looking at your other options are on the left so there's a couple things of note here one is wiring schematics so that's here so you have diesel injection, after treatment, AC, and gateway. If you click on it, you just tell it what engine you're using. So you normally need to know your engine control unit number, um, or you can do a VIN scanner and it'll tell you. And it displays like this. So these are all built into the software. You don't need a tech spec subscription. You don't need Wi-Fi. They're built right into the software and they come loaded with your tool. So you can hover over them and it'll tell you what you're looking at. So this is a relay, relay, starter motor, main relay, fuel pumps, EGR throttle mod motor module, ECU information, and you can click on them to get a little more information. So if you click on them, like this, you have component sheets. So this would be information, descriptions, uh, theory of operation, how to test it. Just telling you operating principle here. Recommended checks, manual activation of the component, so on and so forth. So that's helpful, especially in the off-highway world. It's very difficult to find any sort of wiring schematics or code assistance or anything like that uh, for off-highway for truck two. It's very difficult. So it's nice that Texas included that in the software. Now if we go back to the scan, we can go straight into system scan here, and we'll do a demo diagnosis. Now our demo diagnosis is a recorded ECU, so this is a vehicle we at one point scanned and did a recording for this purpose. So it's going to scan up, and it gives you a report. So these are modules it communicated with, and modules it didn't and it shows you the fault codes in those modules. So this one is after treatment system, this one's diesel injection, you have battery voltage uh, code, you have a delivery line heater code, some EGR codes, differential pressure sensor code. From this page it's more of a overview. So this is an overview of the systems, where the codes are. If you wanted to do a diagnosis from this page we're going to go into a system. So for this one let's do engine. So you just click the engine and double click. It allows you to turn the key on, instrument panel, key, same thing, and pick your tier. So we'll go tier four. So you have 
live data, faults, ECU information, activations, and settings. This is how all of the Texas scans look. So the nice thing about Texas, no matter if you're in a Bobcat skid steer, or a John Deere tractor, or a Freelander truck, or Toyota Camry, all the scans look the same. So it's very easy to navigate. Once you learn one, you've learned them all. It's very helpful for navigation, very helpful for this kind of uh, tool where you're gonna go between different environments often. So you always load on the faults page. If you look here, you have a red triangle. That's a hard fault. And this is active underneath it. Um, if it was a yellow triangle, that's a memory fault. And if it's green, it's cleared. So on your faults, you also have wiring schematics and code help information built into the software. So if you click exhaust gas temperature zero, you click the wiring schematic at the bottom of the page, tell it what motor you have, it's gonna do something really cool. It's gonna open your wiring schematics and then it's gonna highlight your sensor here. So it's highlighting the problem for you. So there's no scrolling through 15 pages of wiring schematics to find it, it's right here with a component sheet that tells you how to diagnose it, how it operates, what could be wrong with it, what your specs are. It's all built in, very handy. Now, if we go back a page, we're back on your faults, and you have some help information. So this is uh, detections or preconditions or you know uh, parameters why this fault could trip and how to get it to clear. So if you're looking at um, this one, short circuit to ground, failure of sensor. So it's pretty straightforward, um, but it's also telling you what it's gonna do. So turn the light on, yes or no. It's telling you, is it going to cause D-rate? If you were looking at something here, uh, it may say causes D-rate, causes level one, causes level two, so on and so forth. Now, if we go to all the way to the left, you have live data. So live data is pressures, RPMs, uh, voltages, temperatures, everything you're watching in live time all the time. So this is all live information displayed by the ECU. Texas just reading it and translated it for you. So this is going to be everything from are the headlights on off? Uh, is the clutch being pressed to fuel pressure to boost pressure to uh, region temp uh, intake outlet differential pressures all that's here now there's a lot and usually the newer the vehicle you get to the more live data you're gonna have so you might have they're calling PIDs you might have you know 73 or you might have 150 300 depending on what you're working on even at 73 it's a lot to scroll through all this so Texas builds a couple different ways to filter my personal favorite is the dashboard so it's like this it looks like a little uh, gauge cluster at the bottom. If you go there, this is your most common sensors, pressures, target, anything you're looking at, your most common PIDs, um, live data PIDs at each system. So this is a fuel system. So we're looking at fuel temperature, we're looking at rail pressure, targeted and actual. We're looking at coolant temp, engine temp, RPM, pedal pressure set status, all of that's here. The most common stuff you're gonna use if you're diagnosing. The next page is going to be EGR turbo side. So same thing here, you're looking at EGR target versus actual positions, you're looking at throttle opening, you're looking at temperatures, you're looking at pressure. So again, most common stuff. And then you have DOC DPF. If you're working on a newer vehicle, you might have a fourth tab, which is a SCR system. So it just depends on your vehicle. But all of that is the most simple, quickest way to do uh, any of your live data filtering down. If you want to get a little more specific, some techs like to use different, um, different formats or different displays, then you can go to this funnel here. Now uh, this funnel is a filter. So if we click the funnel, it's gonna break it down into some groups. So you have percentages, pressures, temperatures, voltages right here. So let's say you wanna get a little more specific, you're troubleshooting something, and you want a specific set of parameters, you can go click the funnel again, and here you have your specific set. So you can do like, let's say you wanna see rail pressure, then you can scroll down and do rail pressure here, and you also wanna see target idle and target intake throttle valve, there you go. So it filters them out for you. Now, Texa also did a cool thing with the record option here. So if you click record, you can do a 30 minute recording session on your pre-selected uh, parameters. So if you wanna watch this and then go drive the truck down the road for 30 minutes, 
You can do that. When you get back, you can just download your data and then watch it back. This helps with troubleshooting on something that's maybe an intermittent issue or only under load, only going uphill, whatever the case may be. You don't have to look at your tablet while trying to drive down the road. It's much cleaner. You don't have to have anybody in the passenger seat with you. You can just drive, get back, play all your data back, and you're good to go. So that's there. You can also, in live time, double click to graph them. So if you double click to graph them, it'll look like this. Um, that's very fancy for reading any little tiny fluctuations. If you, even if you have a little bump here, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0.4, you'll see that on the graph. You can make sure you didn't miss it, just watch them. You also have min maxes. So this is something, maybe you're troubleshooting something on a hard start, and once it cranks up the first time, your fuel pressure is good, but you want to know what your minimum was during the scan. So you have a blue and a gray. Blue is your highest, gray is your least. So if you're doing a uh, fuel pressure, fuel rail pressure, and you are trying to start it up, it's gonna show you the max that it reached and the minimum during the scan. Now if we go back one screen, we're back to the main dashboard. We can go to ECU information. That's our next tab. So ECU information is Data PIDs for um, vehicle serial number, engine number, VIN number, injector codes, when the last time the ECU was updated, any of that stuff can be found here. It's just a display straight from the ECU. Whatever the ECU has reported, that's what we're displaying. So it can be helpful to order parts if you don't know exactly what engine serial number you have. In the off-highway world, there's a lot of different um, variations of engines. You might have the same Kubota engine and the Bobcat skid steer, but there's four or five variations. There's different parts for each one of those. This can help you get the actual number with the engine type V3800 or ECU number, engine serial number, so forth. Now your main two things are gonna be activations and settings. So these are any of your tests or changes. Activations, think a light switch, on off. So if you're doing activations, that's gonna be cylinder cutoff tests, um, def dosing tests, honk the horn, roll the window down, backup beeper on, backup beeper off, that kind of thing, um, but no permanent changes. So this is just a test to make sure something's working. Settings is a permanent change. So if you're doing settings, that's gonna be re regions, speed limit changes, uh, joystick calibrations, VGT programming, injector coding, uh, supply pump learning, something that's going to be a permanent change. So anything from your SCR system to your hydraulics to your speed, all of that is considered a setting. Now what you have available just depends on what system you're in. I'm in the engine side, so we have this here. If you go over to hydraulics, you'll have some joystick configurations, that kind of thing. Um, so it just depends on where you are. But one thing to note is when you click on one, like this one's DPF manual regen, so regeneration, if you click the help button, it'll tell you how to conduct your setting. So that's important for a couple reasons. One, safety, but two, if you're wondering why you can't do a certain function, usually this will give you the answer. So some functions require a specific coolant temp. Some require uh, specific engine conditions. Some have it running, some have it not running, some have it held at a higher RPM, some at a lower RPM. So if you're having an issue starting a function, just check the help button. It'll tell you like this, transmission in neutral, apply parking brake, start engine, let it warm up, leave engine in idle state, blah, 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 so forth. So that is really good information, especially in the off-highway world if you're going back and forth between different brands. One day you're on a John Deere and they might want this specific coolant level or coolant temperature. One day it might be a Caterpillar, they're a little different. Um, some are kind of strange, like a Detroit, you got to cycle the clutch sometimes um, to get it to do a region. There's just some different stuff. All of this information is very helpful for that. Now, I'll back out of this scan. So you're back to this page, you can back out one more time. And you're at your home page. Now that we've closed the software down, we're back at our self-diagnosis scan. Um, you can see everything here. There's a couple other options you can pick if you wanted to go different systems, um, but all the systems are gonna work the same as the one we went into. Everything looks the same in Texas software, it makes it easy. 
Now, one thing I do want to look at is technical data sheets. This is something they've been working on adding um, to most of your major manufacturers now. This is when to do regen claw or when the filter needs to do a regen when it's up for service. But it also can be updated whenever they release technical service bulletins. So you'll see some in there for, hey, this specific vehicle requires, you know, so different sensor now or different variant here. So they've updated that and you can go see all that information under technical data sheets. Back here, um, we wanna talk about eye support, troubleshooting information, and the technical support. So Cutting Edge Automotive Solutions does the technical support for the Texas software. So we support the packages, we support the software and your diagnostics on the vehicle. So when you get the tool, you'll have one year of updates. After that, uh, when they expire, there you don't have to buy a new one. The, the tool will still keep working for you. You'll just lose the ability to update and the technical assistance. So what we do with the technical assistance is use an application called TeamViewer so we can log into your computer and I can play with your software just like I'm running this. So if you had a vehicle you wanted to you wanted us to log in and help you do your injector coatings because you're not really sure how it works or it's your first time doing it, you haven't done it yet. We can log into the computer with you. We can do injector coatings. We can help you do regions. We can help you troubleshoot fault codes. We can help you read wiring schematics. We can help you do all of those things um, that you're going to need to do in order to diagnose the vehicle. We can help walk you through that process. So that's part of your tech spec subscription. So as long as you stay updated, you get to keep using the, uh, the technical support through Cutting Edge. Um, so it's really worth your investment. Uh, you can also get some code information from there uh, without having to call in or without us logging into the computer with you. Another thing they're doing now is with your Axoni packages. So if you're on the Axoni uh, Voice or the Axoni Plus with a light, um, then you're going to get evergreen warranty. So evergreen warranty means as long as you maintain your software tech spec uh, update without a 30 day lapse, then you can continually reactivate your warranty every year. So this means if your battery fails or the screen breaks um, on its own, not due to being run over or damaged, then they will warranty and replace your tablet for you. Um, at no charge, it's just an evergreen warranty. So that's a really cool feature. That's it as far as a walkthrough. We are going to do a more in-depth uh, diagnostic gear coming soon. Uh, we're gonna do some New Holland work on a skid steer. So we'll get back with a video on that here shortly. Thank you for watching.